All right. Uh, as promised, uh, we are actually closing in uh, something that, uh, well, was started you know, a few years ago and taking a look at the remaining uh, products uh, tied to the completion of Final Fantasy VII and sadly some of the few remaining, uh, you know, animated projects that Square Enix did the title Final Fantasy. Yes, yeah, so there's still technically Legend of the Crystal, but uh, that one is even more crusty and old uh, than uh, the, the two, these two shorts that we're about to do today. The, anyway, these are two OVAs uh, that have uh, only in common the fact that they are part of the seven mythos. One of them is an adaptation of the Evil Lime accident, supposedly how things really went. Oh but, boy. Uh, right, we'll get to that. The second is an adaptation of one chapter from one of the novels on the way to a smile. Again, Technically speaking, there's not really much of an order to do these. Uh, uh, the ideally, last order first, uh, what, what, what to do, because it was done in 2005, uh, while the second one on the Velty Osmani episode Zen Denzel was done in 2009. So technically, let's do last order first. Um, if I recall correctly, this was directed by the person who did the Card Captor Sakura anime. Actually, interesting. Um, I, you know, Mo a, Morio Azaka. Did he go on to also work on again, like I mentioned, the Final Fantasy anime? Because I think like that one is a similar art style to Card Cap. No, Sakura. it's even done. No, it's even done by um by a different uh, animation studio. I don't remember what uh, what was the one that Unlimited uh, was done to, but both this uh, and on the way to Smile were done by Madhouse. Uh, um, which to be fair, in the mid to late two thousands uh, were. Uh, relatively known for doing uh, uh, anime adaptation, most notably the yeah. Devil May Cry and Bayonetta anime. Yeah, nowadays they're known for animating Free and Beyond Journey then. Wow! Mm -hmm. huh. That's an and interesting get, way to tie I'm, that I'm, into this. And I'm gonna get this out of the way immediately, you know. I'm actually super okay with the projects on paper. In fact, when I was playing Final Fantasy VII as a kid, um, I think I did mention either of commentary or in, um, but one of the things that I really want was to see, uh, you know, an anime series similar to what I was watching at the time, like, say, Dragon Ball Z, with the Final Fantasy VII characters, uh, you know, adapting the story of that. Kind of like, you know, a bit like what the Yokai Watch, uh, you know, anime did, uh, you know, adapting the the games. Um, however, these are the only projects that happen, and as you're about to see, they're meh. For starters, these never got technically an English dub. Um, they did receive only on the way to a smile, got released in Europe, by the way. Both of them were tie-ins to different versions of Advent Children and never received you know, an English dub and Last Order only got released in America when it came to the West, of the US and Canada. I was only aware of Last Order beforehand, and I'll say this, it doesn't get as feathered as, say, the likes of Final Fantasy XIII, Final Fantasy X-2 even, or even the Final Fantasy anime, but I will also say, I have never met anyone who goes out of their way to say anything really pleasant about Last Order. From what I hear, it wasn't liked back then, and nowadays it's forgotten, if not just looked down upon. Again, nothing uh. terrible, but apparently nothing worth really talking positively about either. That's just, just what I've whatever. heard. And the thing is, this game, Last Order, was never re released whatsoever. Whereas um, One Way to a Smile episode, Denzel did get its proper HD release via the, the Adventure and Complete Blu ray. Last Order was released once in 2005 via DVD, and that was it. It hasn't been re released since. My best guess as to why that is the case is because, you know, unlike a lot of other things, Last Order pretty much is kind of mm -hmm. redundant in the sense that, hey, if you want to see these events now, Crisis Core, essentially. Yeah. Um, okay, so these, day... to... Sorry, go on. these days... These days, Square is an official, you know, way of interpreting the short, and you also have to remember the fact that these are OVAs, and as a result, maybe the West is not super used to the idea of, you know, a high production, you know, budgeted uh, anime that is, like, only 25 minutes. So yeah, if you want to watch this with us, you have to get your dust off your old 2005 DVDs, or you can also get it through um, less licit means. Yeah, that's another thing. Uh, I mentioned, the, again, it's so weird, but also Square is not really 
trying to use too much uh, streaming services and it showcases what they know about it uh, because the Dragon Quest uh, the Dragon Quest 5 movie adaptation the CGI animated movie was uh, direct to Netflix uh, in the West uh, it is skip theaters uh, so All they right. do know how to do make a deal but anyway let's not be too much around the bush so I mentioned we're starting with uh, Last Order so what you need to start uh, is the black screen before the Square Enix uh, and Madhouse logos up so let's start in three, two, one, click. Going retro with this. I do yeah. wonder, okay, this is not really mentioned, but I do wonder if in Japan this was also included as a package in UMDs of Crisis Core, because this recycles um, the music tracks from that uh, all the time. Hmm. Well, considering the Crisis Core also uh, retells... Um... Uh, the Nibelheim flashback, I guess. Sorry, the Nibelheim Speaking incident. Speaking of, Speaking of crisis, of, we start technically after that with Zack, uh, a bit, a bit way too even more bishonen than normal, carrying Cloud on his back. Uh, Man, Cloud, I'm always carrying you. In uh, how many times are we going to retell this part of the story? As it's many like the way he's getting the fans want. It's like the way he's getting shot. Uh, so yeah, we've seen this before, it's an Ibrahim incident, Zack is being chased by the Shinra soldiers, we've seen this, we know exactly how this goes, we know exactly how it ends. Rebased yeah. eight. Oh, this is actually saying uh, in this appearance of Eddie in Crisis Core, you know, younger, without having his hair too long. Uh, this yeah. is also because, uh, believe it or not, this is still important as a product because uh, it showcased footage of uh, before Crisis, uh, which we have never seen yet. Uh, also, I guess. Said, also, yeah, I guess can... that design was set in motion for Crisis Core since this came out in two thousand five, while Crisis Core came out in two thousand seven. Yeah, that is true. Um, yeah, and you can tell this is a Madhouse product because yeah, the animation is pretty great. I it's, will... it's, re it's relatively similar to the job that they did for the Devil May Cry anime that we were doing also around the time. I will say, you gotta love the irony of how, you know, when something like this gets heavily retold, originally this was supposed to be like a deep, deep endgame secret of the game, but now it's common knowledge. Uh... Here's Reno. Rude and Elena. Free strange and shots. These are other Turks from before Crisis. Yes, the entire scope of before Crisis is to showcase that there were a fact of more Turks and they were doing their own stuff in the meantime. And mm -hmm. just before the events of the main game, they were got you know disbanded in mass until only a few of them remained. Tango wasn't even the main boss of them. It was a guy called, well, the, the, he never received a proper English name, so fan translation are a bit divided on how he should be called, uh, usually Belt. And yes, of course, he's not, if only Sephiroth wasn't in there, maybe we could have cut them. <laughs> they will yeah. lose for the shit. <laughs> yeah, good animation. Sephiroth, Sephiroth's like... I've got no control over my life. I feel, yeah, like, that's, well so I feel like that's one yes, thing so. I notice of older animes. Still good animation, but man, sometimes the stills are definitely the least favorable. And I don't mean like animation stills, I mean, oh, this is really the image you chose to throw. So yeah, we don't Freeze see on. the entirety of an evil M accident, we jump uh, right when Sephiroth decided to go ape shit. So thankfully we are, sp uh, uh, to be fair, this was already really before the crisis course, so we're thankfully spared of, uh, quote unquote, uh, ma the masterful contribution of Genesis. Uh, more if you know about that, the actual game on that uh, matter. Uh, but we don't get to see Sephiroth playfully skipping off to burn the village down. <laughs> um... Let me check. Yeah, okay. Might as well mention the framing device of saying reading a book basically sets what oh yes, Tifa um, sets what the square is actually meant to interpret the movie and in these days. And officially, it's labeled as what the Turks believe it happened that day. Keep that in mind. Also, Zangan helping the people. That's not answering the question, Zanga. Nope. So yeah, where, where, who did this? Well, it appears to be Sephiroth um, doing. 
for the record, since we're venturing, you know, again, this is why Tifa is actually going to the director because her father actually went there. Um, I think the novels, these specific, either the novels of the Ultimania guys did mention that uh, Tifa's father has a canonical name. I just don't remember what specifically is. Oh, I see. We're going to be switching back and forth between time dates. Mm. Yeah, we're interspersing between the actual accident in Ibrahim and Zank carrying a comatose cloud. Except the fact that, okay, I guess we're supposed to be close to, to Midgar in this, but the atmosphere is a bit too grimy for it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So, let me get this straight. Zack, let me get this straight. Zack died to an army, but here he is dodging literally an army's fleet of bullets like he's in the flipping Matrix. Uh, this, is a, this is also the first showcase of the fact that the captains of the Shinra units have been retconned from having the entire red coat to just the scarf. It's yeah. like he said, it's a dang crying shame of what they really designed. And, uh, you, you also have to remember, Jova, that Crisis Core was directed by Ajime Tabata, and one of his primary traits is that at the end of the story he removes the protagonist's uh, plot armor. <laughs> and, and kills the protagonist. That's basically his his thing in literally all three of his major projects. Of also, course. That being said, uh, this, uh, despite everything, the the hilt of Zack's Buster Sword is actually consistent with one original game. Again, it requires exploration because we haven't have encountered yet um, with the, the reunion version they retconned it. But for some reason, in both Advent Share and Crisis Core, they retconned in those the hilt of the Buster Sword into being this more ornate, golden, angelic kind of thing, which really has no purpose. And rightfully so, it was just eventually discarded. Yeah. NGO! I'm. Definitely it's entirely just... it's it's entirely part of how they handle the bastard sword in the bigger mythos instead of mm -hmm. being supposedly just you know part of the standard soldier you know you treatment. Know, uh, I guess know, to be fair, it is a way to explain why Cloud's Buster Sword is literally the only Buster Sword we ever see in the game. Like I said, Robin, you can make an argument and technically say that uh, the actual soldier enemies uh, do have it, uh, just you know it's stylized a bit differently back when the, the original game was released and the idea that each soldier carries a two-hand sword, especially because uh, otherwise the Buster Sword is such a unique weapon that it would question why Shinra is, why Shinra is not actually you know, pondering about it. Uh, not even in the remake they do it. Uh. That was an interesting thing. So going off of this anime, essentially, Zack was practically unstoppable but was caught lacking at that cliff, essentially. Also... You can also tell this was done before attacking Crisis Core because in Crisis Core, Zanka be friends with one of the Turks, uh, Cisney, um, and uh, she's actually one of the last people that he meets uh, before he's passing mm -hmm. away. However, if I recall correctly, he doesn't see her here because they yeah. haven't established yet that. Uh, That's another thing going off the original. It was like only three soldiers, as far as we knew in the original game. So, again, since this was before Crisis Core, even no, there established... were there were the units, Jova, the third and second class at the very least, uh, as enemies. Uh. True, yeah, but still, going off the original, there were much fewer soldiers than this. But yeah, this is where Tifa meets her dad dying. Not in the reactor, but outside, but sure, I guess. Yeah, okay. It was, meant to be, it, was, it, it was meant to be inside the reactor. I, I know that it feels neat picky, but conversely, it makes me wonder why doing it, because you prefer the background? Uh, this is always kind of an iffy thing where, obviously, lower poly games, you know, obviously, with lower poly games, people tend to want to see that in animation because, hey, here's a clear way of showing what happened. This is not clear because this contradicts what happened in the original. Especially it also means that Sephiro left his Mazamune outside, which is very weird. Not only like, that... Yes, well, yeah, Shiri? Why do they make Tifa look so much older than she actually is here? Huh. Yeah, that's, a, that, that's a true. Yeah, She's supposed yeah, no, to be 15 around this point. So. so, yeah, but no, seriously. Tifa being outside really suspends the disbelief a little too far that I get it she's angry and whatnot but if she's outside she has more time to think on this stuff essentially and yeah like Tio mentioned Sephiroth leaving his sword out there for just anyone to get is 
A bit silly, but don't worry, here's Tifa to return it to him by loudly announcing her attack. To yeah. be fair, that is what actually did happen in the original game, you know, mm. blinded by rage and everything, blah blah mm. blah. Well, the, the experience. So. I mean, the di the difference least... is that Tifa was, like, in the same room as him, so at least I can get that, you know, it's a much more flash-of-the-moment thing. The fact that she has to traverse True. all yeah. that way, though, she should at least have fought some stuff out. Yeah, and now she's saying, you promised you would come, or whatever I said. And we flash back to temporary to the promise, uh, you know, where they made as kids. Mm hmm And back to this. Yeah, no, I I'm not gonna lie, this pacing is kind of naff for me. I don't feel like we need to constantly be going back and forth and back and forth between these points just to show how awesome Zack was before obviously jobbing. Cause yeah, you know, you know, Cloud. After all this trouble that I'm going through to keep you alive, you better save me in some big triple timeline uh, uh, accident later. Yeah, I'm gonna, I oh, was going to tell face on that notion. Also, um, yeah. Now that I think about it, Rude was in on the chase of both Cloud and Zack. Why didn't Rude recognize Cloud and Midgar? Uh, well, especially also Elena here. True, mm -hmm. yeah. Let me, let me, let me say something. Like, it's, just, it's just because, again, like, uh, it feels weird because they don't, they don't, uh, like, it, it feels like, it, I have to wonder, why does this anime even exist to begin with? I have to wonder. My... Like, it's it's, te it's wish... telling events that we've seen already in the game, and I guess it's just, oh, let's just see, but you get to see this, like, these iconic moments fully animated at my house, I guess. But at the same time, even if they were like super accurate, for example, let's pretend for a moment that this is like super accurate, like copy pasted from the games and everything, right? It's just, it still feels redundant. Okay, okay, okay. To be fair, at the time, I think this is around the time that fans were wanting a remake of Seven, so I can get it, and Square probably saw the money potential there too. I do wonder if it was just a. Consider a sort of attack demo, the idea of showcasing, hey, how, how this scene would look like in anime format. Maybe, we, you know, if people are interested in Apple, we might do something about it. Uh, but the idea got lost along the way. The problem with this is, like, it feels like what this is is essentially just an OVA that tries to stick as many familiar characters and was breaking that door really necessary? Sephiroth already went through. Well, this is, what happened. this is what happened in the original game, too, to be fair. Well, no, the door was already open. I think it's what oh, happened in Crisis Core, actually. Ah, uh, okay, well, there you go, then. But yeah, no, I mean, seriously, though, I feel like them just stuffing in, hey, remember this character here and there? It unfortunately comes at the sacrifice of the plot. Because Rude and Elena being there on the chase for Zack and Cloud does for not the... make sense since they don't I, I recognize say, Cloud. Sephiroth, why did you kill the villagers? Why did you hurt Tifa? And Sephiroth, like, for the lols. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, 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 I know. You love your money very much. Yes, we know. Maybe a bit too much, huh? Mommy, these people won't let me kill stuff. Well, that's very bad, sweetie. You I should kill them say, all. Again, this specifically is supposed to be an adaptation of the FMV in which Sephiroth, you know, rips away the cover of Genova. But the, I argue that the original game's FMV had the, the close-ups uh, and Sephiroth's vernacular stare. One in these, uh, instead, these uh, were taken at a sort of an angle. So mm -hmm. it was not given too much of a favor. Well, Zach, you were there with him when he went insane, shouldn't you? Like know? I said, I do wonder also, you know, the, the, not the casting, but you know, because, you know, the voice actors at this point were either their first major role or, you know, um, they were already slightly accustomed to the roles like Toshuki, Monikawa, and Sephiroth. I do ponder about the, the recruitment of the director. Like, who thought it's clear it was a great idea to use the the director of the card capture Sakura anime for a project like this. Uh, I don't know, it just feels random. Well, to be fair, I mean, uh, just because he directed that doesn't mean he's not capable of other stuff. Well, let me see actually what else he did. Despite, I mean, you know... Sorry, despite, despite, despite the inaccuracies to some of the stuff in the game, this is well directed. Uh, like, he said, like he just said, for example, with the scene with Sephiroth, I argue not, because, you know, some oh, of the God, camera angles were cuts. completely wrong. wrong. Uh, 
Oh, it was the director of Banana anime. I didn't know that. Like, uh... I think the animation's fine, but I feel like there were just too many cuts during that scene. And yes, despite how awesome Zack was, it's actually not him that will take down Seth. Because Lothier. everything needs to fall into place. So. You know, that's one a, thing I've never... Take, take a shot uh, how many times Sephiroth says the word mother in the entire franchise. So and, yeah, yeah, much like what happened with the real, real ZZ, the an accident, Cloud did manage to find the courage. I would like to advise the audience against playing that drinking game. <laughs> but sure, right? didn't we have so much fun with the drinking game where both me and Wiz were taking shots every time they say Pulseless see our enemies of Cocoon? <laughs> uh. Cloud, you should have double tapped. Now the one made now this is the major inaccuracy that I've always went what? Uh, even back in the, ever since I first watched this by torrenting it this all right, uh, let's see. Day. It's happening a few means. Yeah. Wait, so she knew Tifa, Cloud was there. Yeah, so, so, so Tifa wakes up and sees that it was Cloud at Saber. Yeah, this doesn't contradict basically okay. the entire game at all, does I it? get the idea when the people who did this were handled how the scene went in the game. They thought that the dialogue were happening because Tifa is saying these things when we're playing the game. But this is an, but that is a narration that Tifa is having realizing the thing. But the problem is interpreted as Tifa saying this in in, in that moment. I get the idea that's what happened. But trust me, that's not the worst it gets. Oh, this ought to be fun. But, but I was told that Zack was so awesome and that he totally could have done it and Cloud wasn't in the way. But Sephiroth is even more awesome, Jova. That's the problem. So Sephiroth is so awesome that he cancels out Zack's awesome and lets Cloud be awesome. I know, but don't you see, Jova? That's because Sephiroth was distracted at the time. All right. Uh, check this out. Uh... So if you remember, the original way it went was that Cloud found the strength to grip the Mazamune and used his own body as a counterweight to lift Sephiroth up and yeet that shit out into the, the reactor. And something still happened, something like this, uh, you know, as you can see. But uh, when this shit happens, uh, Sephiroth gives a look at Cloud. Cloud eye starts glowing because I guess he was in Jack Rorschach with Marco. Several has like a realization moment. No. He's not gonna actually. And he jumps on his own. Oh god, I Excuse hate me. this. What? I hate this, I Why? hate this, I hate this. It takes away Cloud's victory from Sephiroth, and I guess makes it that Sephiroth was planning like a gajillion steps ahead and being like, oh. This is one of the Turks from before Crisis, so don't worry. I'm guessing the implication is that Sephiroth knew that he'll be able to control Cloud because it's of the It's still bullshit. Again, it, take, it takes away the moment of, vi of victory, like you said. Um, yeah, uh, and like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What I liked was that everyone there, Zack, Sephiroth, maybe even Cloud himself, were caught off guard by the fact that the oh-so-awesome superhuman oh hey hojo was defeated by just a nobody who shinra deemed as pointless which i feel also, which i feel helped add to the point of how you know obviously their their standards weren't the best to go off of also this is where you can this is where it becomes obvious that nomura did not work on this thing is at least not as character designer because ojo doesn't look nearly as slimy as he's supposed to not just that he's supposed to be shorter than, than the other people here they they try to compensate a bit by making his lightly hunched over but that's not it uh... to be fair a lot of other takes seem to also make hojo surprisingly lanky and the only reason he shows up shorter is like he's hunched over like ridley which, I guess, to be fair, Sephiroth had to get them tall jeans from somewhere. Well, that happened. So, yeah, Zack and Cal were taken away to experiment. So, which is... we count as a... Alright, then, we're, we're, we're done which, here. Or we're again, it, it raises the question that it really doesn't make sense, but even the remake did not touch this about. 
Well, you, you are the rest of the Turks, uh, yeah, you know, including yeah. Rainer and the others. Uh, I'm sorry, um, it's, it, this is probably why this thing is... Uh, Square probably doesn't want to, to bring this back again, probably. I think I can get... I, I can get why. It's not terrible, but it is horribly contradictory to what's agreed to be the main canon. Yes, in, in, again, I can understand because, you know, before Crisis, uh, you know, was... Uh, so almost impossible to emulate until a certain point, but it was very weird, you know, for people to not uh, um, understand. But yes, each of the main playable Turks did have a specific personality, you know, to bounce off. Again, if they manage to finally announce that into Ever Crisis, uh, we're here hoping that, you know, the, the product manages to give them justice. Wait, uh, hold on. You mentioned playable Turks. Was before Crisis releases like a cell phone game or something back Yes, in the day? episodic. Uh, Right, yeah. Similar I'm... to similar to the original release of Final Fantasy IV, the After Years, uh, Square was banking on the episodic uh, uh, Java cell phone games. These days, it is emulatable with a fan translation, but it still looks crusty as shit. Mm -hmm. So I, I know understand. basically what the story is about, but uh, anyway, we conclude it... with what we know. The the, the truck the, scene, yeah. The truck scene. You know, Cloud, I decided I'm going to become a mercenary. And one day I'm also going to become a time traveler. What do you think? Sounds like a good idea to steal when you die. Time travel is bad for you physically and mentally. Don't do it. Oh snap! Is Cloud about to get yeah, sniped? <laughs> yeah, and, and if Blimps was here, he would have mentioned that Adrian yeah. 47 is on the case. Well, <laughs> well, well, you're, well, well you're no fun, Shiro. But Pedro, remember, 13.2 told me that time traveling gives you cancer. Oh, but yeah, let true. me guess. Oh, but <laughs> Listen, me... you can have fun without alcohol, you can have fun without time travel. I can never have fun with what I love. Yeah, one, <laughs> the, the, the one last big weird moment of the anime is that the characters are, are you know, attacked while on the truck instead of, oh. you know, afterward. <laughs> Wouldn't it make sense to end the film more so with Zack's death? By the way, one one particular bit of it that I like to say as well, uh, the English, uh, the the sorry, the Portuguese fan translation for this particular OVA was done by a guy that I actually know. Uh, per I actually talked to him personally. Uh -huh. uh, back this was like years ago, decades ago. Keep that in mind, right? And uh, yeah, the story in here was still handled by Nojiva. So, what happened? Was he given you instruction? How did you forget <laughs> what happened in Nibelheim? You wrote it! Okay, okay, okay. I wonder. We know that a remake has been something that apparently they've been working on for ages. I wonder if maybe at the time they secretly had a remake in the works and one of the things, like, you know, like this was going to reflect the changes made in that remake. And mind you, I am completely spitballing here, but at least it's a reason for making something so mm -hmm. contradictory like this was before yeah. the multiverse even was a thing okay so. the credits mentioned that this had a second writer we along with nojima a guy called kazuhiko inukai um apparently this was one of the early his early works uh, and after this uh, he co he co-wrote two episodes of the iron man anime all things interesting ah uh, yes awesome. back when marvel was doing their anime projects also, Shiro, you can tell me what I can have fun around with. You're not, you're not my mom. <laughs> anyway, we can skip the rest of the credits, so I, you can do the rest, audience. There is no post credit scene, so, you know, Cloud will not be invited to the Smash Bros. initiative just yet. Not um, always no. the point of all this. Anyway, instead we're jumping in on second one, as I mentioned, it's called On the Way to a Smile, Episode Denzel. This is really odd, but in order for the others and you audience to get prepared, let me give you some background on to this. On the Way to a Smile is a novel which is a, basically an anthology collection. Um, you might know it recently because it was actually translated recently. Um, it, er it arrived in the US and the, the rest of the world in 2018, while originally it was written in 2009. And it also jumps a bit around the timeline. Some of the anthology stories are actually set before the events of the original game, like talking about what happened to Barrett after he lost his arm uh, and lost the dying, but before he found the avalanche. Um, 
or Somerset Avers. I particularly recommend the episode of Red 13, which talks about uh, you know him coming to terms with uh, his high longevity and having to come to terms with the fact that Clown and the Avers will die before him. Um, and Vincent uh, and him share a bond with this because uh, this re- it's revealed in that that Vincent is essentially mm-hmm. immortal due to his experiment. And they decided to adapt only one episode of all these anthology, and it's the one that involved the character that we saw in Advent Children, the other kid that befriended Marlene and got essentially, quote-unquote, adopted by Colin Tifa, the kid called Denzel. And, <laughs> okay, I'm mm-hmm. going to be as charitable as possible here and just say that I don't get this. Because if I had to be honest... Both in pres- pro present in Advent Children and for this story, I found Denzel to be kind of boring. He, he, as the end, this short will showcase his presence as a tie in to the events of the original game, still makes sense in some kind of way, and how he got connected with Cloud. But I don't really see the appeal. I think, honestly, this could have been easily be an episode about Marlene, you know, yes. tied to her. If I may, my best guess is Denzel is like what a lot of shows, Western, anime, whatever we're doing, was having a certain demographic of kid who the littler kids could identify with. Notice in Sonic X with Chris Forndike, essentially. My best guess is he was made for the kid characters like, sure, Final Fantasy VII may have been rated T for teen, but T for teen can just as well be accessible for little kids, and my guess is that Denzo was a character they crafted with the idea of hooking on audiences with that, you know, again, given his role and noticeable uh, presence and stuff like Advent Children, that's my best guess. That or he was supposed to originally be Cloud and Tifa's kid before they changed that in post, I don't know possible anyway the good news is that uh, unlike last order this one actually got released eventually with a bl- as a blu-ray so it is present in hd still again not on streaming again if they bumper to re-release in 4k advent children they could easily just slap that onto netflix and make this part of that uh, too um i don't know what the square is actually handling you know planning when it comes to you know streaming their proper properties but they can but anyway, the point is that there are no logos uh, to start with. It's a black screen run before the special, you know, the OVAs literally starts uh, with the panning on shot of Midgar. So start before in that uh, in three, two, one, click. So I'm guessing this one's not as contradictory as Last Order, at least. No, it's it's no, a basic, no. it acts as a prequel to Advent Children's yeah. the, 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 the primary purpose of this is to tell Denzel's backstory, basically. It still provides, you know, a bit of adding addition, as in, oh, what was Denzel and his family doing? The major thing you need to know, this bartender, it's a bit hard to see, is Johnny. Huh. Yeah. Hey, hey, Johnny. You're more familiar with him thanks to the remake because, if I had to be honest, in the original game, his contribution was still very little. I have no idea um, He's... why. Again, I get it. He might have been a fan favorite of people like Motobu Toriyama, but I don't know. If I recall correctly, he's like one of the NPCs who has repeated looks anyway in the original game. Not that much. Again, the, the last part, the last moment where you meet him is in Costa del Sol, but otherwise he drops from the rest of the game afterward. You are right that the remake definitely made him a lot more distinguishable and, I guess, memorable. The WRO, as that guy mentioned, is the organization that's uh, dedicated to, you know, Fix shit, fix shit up, uh, you know, after the events of the meteor fall. Um, as we discover in uh, um, Interjo Cerberus, uh, Reeb is at the helm of it, um, but secretly is also founded by people like Rufus and of all people, Don Cornio. Yes, I only did mention Skimly this in the original run, but after the events of Vutai, Don Cornio survives in, on a, in a wheelchair, and he actually redeems himself, believe it or not. I guess after, like, two brushes with death, he finally figured, okay, it's time to have a change of heart. Also because, like I said, he's paralyzed. I, mean, I love that, I love that, I have to mention that. Oh, where's mom? She's out shopping. Let me guess, for milk? <laughs> Mm. Oh, right, this is around the time Avalanche was being, uh, uh, blamed about for the to attacks. Be 
Yeah, the father of Denzel actually knows been working at Shinra, got to know in advance about the Sector 7 dropping, so he decided to try to save his family. I'm guessing that did not go as planned. Given that Denzel's an orphan in Advent Children. Mm -hmm. that's, mm -hmm. kind of the, that, that's kind of the point to show how he became an orphan. Which is funny, because his caretakers would become essentially, well, ex-Avalanche members, but you get the point. Don't worry, there's a go on with your father, and I'm sure no problems will arise from that. Nothing bad Maybe happens to mothers in anime. Of course. Of course. So. Especially after a shot like that, you know? <laughs> Just ask Ryoko Matoi. Also, small correction, this one was not, and this, the animation of this was not handled by Madhouse, but by Studio G1 um, and uh, Studio Live, uh, two minor co animation companies. Yeah, sure. One of these people, someone has to come up with a fun subversion of that, where, you know, the, after a shot like that, the mom disappears and everybody thinks she's dead, but then she comes back a few years after, oh, mom, where have you been all these years? Yeah, funny story, I kind of got lost. It kind of reminds me. I couldn't find my way back. Anyway, I got the milk. <laughs> it kind of, it, it, it does kind of remind me at the end, the ending of the original thirteen, where you know, uh, Lightning and Snow find Sarah and the Sarah finds his son, and then we cut to Hope, hoping to see his parents, but he doesn't see them. No, <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's the thing, Shiro. Right? There's an episode of kind, uh, there's an episode of I Am Weasel that actually subverts that by going, like, oh, my father, he went for milk when I was nine. But then at the end, the father shows up. Oh, Dad, you're back. I'm so happy. So did you get the milk? Also, no. <laughs> also smooth move, Dad. <laughs> smooth mood. I get it. You want to maybe see if your wife's okay, but really? You left your son, admittedly with a friend, yes, but really? You left your son promising you'll be fine? It has begun. So if the mom went out to get milk, what did the father went out to get? Cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mom out for milk, dad out for cigarettes, a twofer. It's always one of those two. Okay, but okay, okay but, but but what if it was the kid leaving the house? What would he get? Milk? Uh, no, 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 the mom already Ice went pops? out for milk. <laughs> yeah, maybe a lollipop, I guess. Sure. Yeah, where's your home, kid? Well, he pointed at the rubble. <laughs> yeah, oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> Sucks to be you. Uh, <laughs> your parents? Yeah, it, 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 it reminds me of episode one of Spy Family, where the, the male men's are like, could you give this to your mom or your dad? My mama doesn't exist. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I also know what you're thinking. Maybe, you know, these events, uh, you know, shaping up Denzel into hating uh, Avalanche, so when he meets Cloud, he might be initially resentful. Um, not really. It, if anything, it doesn't really go that much anywhere. And we know that by the time of Av, sorry, and we know that by the time of Advent Children, he is completely in favor of Cloud. So, um... well, to be fair, remind me if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong too, but I don't think he ever figures out entirely what Cloud and Tiff have done in the past, does he? Uh, no, I don't think so. Also, yeah, that was so... a toy model of the Ivy. Although, although, yeah, although I, think, it... I think it's, I think, I think it's more so that if I remember correctly, Cloud and Tifa don't know most of his backstory, do they? No. Yeah, Which... so, so it's more like a matter of neither side knows what actually, knows the secret backstory of the other. So it works out at the end, basically. Ignorance although, is bliss. although in that case, though, like, what's the point then of hyping him up for revenge against Avalanche if you know the story don't do anything with it? I guess to still showcase the Shinra's propaganda machine. Well, I don't to know. Be, well, to be fair, obviously you can't have him go through this backstory and not have him rage against Shinra at all. No, 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 that no, would no, make no, sense. No, 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 but that's the thing. He, they're setting up him up to rage against Avalanche. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, 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 sorry, I meant Avalanche. Again, to be fair, him having that initial fury, obviously, you have to have that because it wouldn't make sense for him not to have that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not a bad idea on paper, but I feel like, ideally, it should culminate with him confronting Cloud T for, heck, even Barrett, essentially, and then honestly, learning the Joba, full story. Honestly, Joe, but the alternative would be for him to turn against Cloud and Teeth and angry and have this big second part, part, second act style breakup and shit. You know, do we really okay. want to do that? 
I believe maybe there is a deeper meaning, but uh, we're not there yet. I will try to explain as we actually reach it. Uh, I feel like with more time, that idea could work. Look, it, it may be cliche, that doesn't mean it can't work, and I feel like ultimately it would settle on the kid learning the truth at least. Anyway, the point is that, you know, Denzel was actually rescued by another person leaving Midgar. I don't think it was from the slums. But obviously something bad has to happen. Sweet old grandma. Again, oh, something bad that. has to happen to her because, again, wow. he's in Tifa's care by the time of Advent yeah. Children. I lost my parents, but I got myself a grandma. I'm sure things will go fine from this point on. Oh, uh, wait. The meter is about to fall. God damn. God damn it. This kid can't have shit. <laughs> if you forgot, uh, since I did bother to mention in Ever Crisis, uh, um, we know now that, thanks to the timeline, that the events of the original game happened in all over the span of 90 days tops. Uh, so it kind of makes sense that things will go, go on this past. Uh. Okay, and one thing we do know about the meteor attack is, like, thankfully Midgar was saved, but apparently there was some damage done, like, uh, hence, Well, physical, you know... physical, absolutely, yeah, like the tornado ravaging. The, 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 in terms of casualties, they weren't much because of what Casey said. He oh, actually yeah. asked, he asked the Turks to actually have everyone, you know, take refuge away from the city, and he, I... before crisis, you actually do that. I do want to give credit to this scene right here because I actually do like this bit where she said, look, I'm going to stay here because it doesn't matter if I run because the whole planet is going to go kaputs. However, uh, you're free to go if you if you want and take as much of it as you need uh, because I believe you you may be just a kid, but you still deserve the right to choose hey, what trouble. you want to do. What, but you still deserve it to choose. Uh, the, 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 that's a nice moment. I don't, I don't mind that. Oh, it's 14, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Dala, poor Dala Buddha. Um, and yeah, of course, uh, they, they showcase the live stream arriving to save the day. And unfortunately, it's... unlike with Lost Odyssey, this meteor does not miss. <laughs> Basically, Shiloh, um, uh, there's a Lost Odyssey game which is made by the original creator of Final Fantasy and, and, uh, and Final Fantasy VII in particular, along with Nomura, right? Sakaguchi, right? Um, there's actually a character that has a, a, a move that's literally a Final Fantasy VII style meteor, and it does this big thing where it engulfs the whole thing, you know, just like the meteor from Seven, but it can still miss. <laughs> so you have that entire big animation thing and then miss. So what? yeah, unfor <laughs> unfortunately, the, the exposure to the live stream apparently killed the old lady. Apparently, the only reason Denzel got saved because it was behind one door. Doesn't that give him geostigma, stigma though? Um, that's technically for what's happening later, because remember, it takes two years for the Geostigma to arrive. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's something that Advent Children doesn't really tell or only glosses over. The idea is that Geostigma preys upon people being not necessarily weak-willed, but in a state of vulnerability, which it also reinforces my absolutely stained for you know that movie because again it basically tells that cloud only over two years uh, you know got the blues driver 2000 syndrome and as a result uh, you know he, he became prey to you know uh, space cancer but don't you know tio he needed zach to reinforce him uh. <sighs> look i like zach i get that square liked zach zach was a nice guy it's unfair what happened to him but Oh my god, whose idea was it to make it that Zack was just- Jesus! Oh, holy! Oh. <laughs> you know, Aerith, I thought Livestream was supposed to help people! Well, remember, the Livestream is still highly radioactive. Joe, Joe, but that's just Setra propaganda. <laughs> that would be something if Aerith was secretly some Setra blowhard, but, uh, no, though, that is one of the big ironies, though. Sephiroth originally wanted to use Livestream to rule the world, but Livestream ended up being what saved the world against his plan. This Sorry, poor kid. child. Sorry, kid, no one can help you. Yeah, basically, oh, Shiro, the, the, the entire... To be fair, again, this is technically a, a good adaptation. A good way to sum up these, uh, this chapter is basically saying Denzel is having a bad day after another. Well, to be fair, that's what was happening. It makes sense considering he lived in Midgar. Well, that, a lot of people in Midgar went through this shit, probably. That's the ironic thing. He finally had gotten a taste of the high life, but nope, that had to go too. But 
But that's nothing, Shiro. Wait till you see when he manages to find himself a little kitty friend uh, that has him. And then of course, turns out oh, that great. that kitty, <laughs> and, then, and then it turns out that that kitty gets uh, smushed by... Hey, 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 get Oh, Hino. hey, hey, why get... does this episode have Hino as a guest show? Right? I was about to say, get Hino out of the writing booth there, Pedro. <laughs> Shoo, fine. leave. <laughs> fine, fine, fine. We'll replace cat with a dog. Uh, oh, God damn it. <laughs> the, 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 the writer of John Wick took I am joking. <laughs> <laughs> yes, here comes the writer of John Wick. <laughs> well, I guess the piano work is nice. The music for this is it's not recycled. Let me see about the composer. It's still done by Takeru Shimoto. Makes sense. So. You know, mm -hmm. ma maybe the secret purpose of this is to see Reeve truly see the damage that Shinra has brought on, indirectly or directly. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Look at that, Shiro. The the Twelve composer is doing the music for this. Huh? Is that the case, Tio? Yes. Sorry, Take Takeru Shimoto. No, 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 no. My bit about. Maybe the true purpose of this movie is actually for Reeve to see the damages that Shinra has wrought directly or indirectly. I mean, he doesn't really need it uh, yet, or any knowledge enough. Again, I I'm I'm gonna be honest. I you know what? Actually, no. Oh boy, hold on. Here we go. Now we have the first exposure for the contract to, to the geostigma. I'm guessing Advent Children was something they had planned at the moment. Well, no, this was only 2009, so if anything, it was close to the release of the complete. Uh, well, when was when was the, the original episode, novel-wise, written? The original novel was uh, written, uh, let me check just to be sure, because I didn't mention in the intro. Uh, yeah, fuck, not the right link. Uh, also, yep. oh, I'm sorry, go on. The original novel was written in 2009, same year. Oh, okay, though. So, based okay. based off of the Final Fantasy Wikia, though, like I mean, uh, this was an episodic series released in short stories, and the first of these chapters was released on the official Japanese Advent Children website starting on September fifth, two thousand five. Basically, eventually it got collapsed together because, again, this is still about that, about Denzel alone. But it's still overall the adaptation of only one of the stories. So, this is essentially an Advent Children tie-in. Yes, sir. Again, to provide uh, content. If anything, this should have been... Uh... This should have been something like, again, like I said, they could have done something like, uh, this would have been a short that would air in theaters before the movie. Because this is very important information to provide, like, because because if you just watch the movie itself, uh, they, they don't bother to even introduce Denzel and who the hell he is, why is he here, like that. This, so this short is very important context so that uh, uh, for the movie. So this should have this should. I'm glad that now, that fortunately now that's no longer a problem because every Blu-ray of the movie comes with this short, so it's fine, right? I do. And that would have actually been a cool thing, you know, having a short for a movie in theaters that you know precedes the movie that it directly ties into. Yeah, it would have been a, a good way to... So yeah, now the rest of the kids are actually helping with the construction of the City of Edge, which is on the outskirts of Midgar. Um, again, uh, by the time of uh, the... I don't know if they're just Cerberus, uh, um, it is popular belief that uh, Midgar is uh, radioactive when it's really not the case. It was just basically a cover-up for deep ground. Oh, there you go, Shiro. And now he's found a whole group of friends. Other lost children. I'm, sh I'm sure I I'm sure it'll be fine. Under the tutelage of this bearded guy like called Gaskin. Who absolutely won't die. Whoopsie! He also got the... I, I can't believe Gaskin died of geostigma. No, the fact that Tifa's the one looking after these kids led me to absolutely believe he would go. survive. Died a month later. <laughs> oh well. Maybe we need to stop saying everything will be fine. Oh, sure. Uh, I, I want to mention the, the, the line that Denzel just said for sure, right? All good people die first, right? <laughs> well, <that's laughs> that's and this I is the point I... uh... Go on. Go on. Shoot, uh, even the, the children works. died. Yeah, 
that's how the universe this universe works shiroi the good people always die before the bad guys there's a there's a song about that <laughs> and yeah. this is the point where Reem quietly leaves the table and he's like all right i'm gonna back gonna get back to my cat you know this does beg the question though given how geostigma works did Denzel just have such a strong will that the Geostigma hadn't affected him yet, or...? Possible. It cannot, okay, that, it's weird because it's... You may think of it something like, say, oh, because he, you know, he was also close to the live stream, he also, you know, had more resistance to it, kind of like Cloud. But even in eventually showcase, but the idea the Geo Stigma is, is so inconsistent. Not only that, mm -hmm. but... In case you need to know better, because we only did mention also briefly for Advent Children, the idea behind the Geo Stigma is that by the time of Meteor Fall, since the live stream was converging, one of the last gambit, gambits of Genova and partially Sepiot was to infuse part of the Genova cells into that so that people that could be exposed could potentially, you know, act as carriers, uh, you know, again, literal space cancer because Genova is an alien. You know, this also begs the question, Denzel did not seem uber depressed in Advent Children. You know, the bit where Geostigma should be affecting him the worst, so... What gives? He's like... more rage, he's more angsty, uh, more noticeable during the fight against the creature before Bahamut shows up, uh, where he basically says, uh, you know, in the he completely with the English dub, him saying, "Son of a bitch." Denzel said that. Yes, like as I noted, oh, right, in, the, yeah. in, the, in, the, in the Japanese dub he says "yamero," which means "stop it." Um, in the English dub he says, uh, "you know, son of a bitch." And I can tell you that in, in the subtitles of my language, the Italian subs for with children, he says, "You're finished." And I'm like, "So I'm sorry, <laughs> booby. Which is it?" <laughs> Goodness gracious! Having the little kid square. How edgy of you, square. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I mean, Denzel's character and mannerism seems to be all over the place, honestly, with between this and Advent Children. Again, like, he seems a lot more depressed here than he was in Advent Children, but the Geostigma, at least unless he's lying, hadn't been affecting him. Or it was, you know, going, whoa, whoa what did the close-up of Johnny's face? <laughs> <laughs> Fun fact, uh, since I did power to track, uh, again, to maintain the level of consistencies, uh, despite the fact that this body for call credit is a debut uh, and he doesn't have much to say, Johnny's voice, a Japanese voice actor, actually did reprise the role for the remake games. Uh, actually, that's pretty neat. Uh, oh, I recognize that motorcycle and Motorola phone, please buy. Yes, uh, Hello, Moto. I love how even in this, <laughs> even in this, advertising is still key with that damn phone. Is yeah, right? and yeah, just like that, you know, Todd was still ghosting Tifa. Hmm. Uh, yes, Peter? Uh, and Hino turns to you as well, like, hey, stop censoring my writing. Also, why did Cloud just leave his phone hooked up to his motorcycle? That is and a good know, question. And Tifa's wearing her Advent Children outfit. Even Cloud is, like you said, again... again well, this is a tie-in, to be fair, so... Like, no, no, I know. For Tifa, again, the color scheme is more appropriate, because even in the original game, her outfit was basically black and white, so, you know, it's not a matter of excuse. But as a general thought, I'm still not really a fan of these costumes. Oh, Jesus, there's so. the Geostigma. A bit late. He's also, immune. Also, I feel like this is around that time when animators couldn't decide if Tifa is. had black hair and or brown hair. And he's considerably uh, lankier, and his, and his hair did... The, the... Okay, <sighs> now it looks fine. Okay, Cloud's hair looks considerably more pointy, or upwards. More pointing upwards than usual. And this is and how another, Cloud and Tifa that, adopted a new kid. That's also another thing. Compared to the to Last Order and, and Madhouse in general, this studio seems to adopt the idea of the far shots where characters are smaller to be far less detailed, and as a result, it causes a bit of whiplash. Okay, I'm guessing this has to have happened after Advent Children, given how the kid is in a much better state than he was during well, yes, uh, Advent uh, Children. Uh, um, Denzel is recounting this to Reeve, essentially, this story. Oh, yeah, 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 but what I mean is, like, well, obviously he's not mentioning what happened during Advent Children, because, well, spoilers, but I'm guessing in an interesting move, this scene here is taking place after Advent Children. And yeah, yeah, it is. 
And in case you're wondering, he wanting to join the WRO organization. Yeah, well, aside from that, Denzel, after this and having children, was never mentioned again. I don't even think that you're just several powers to mention what happened to him. Did he get no. like a card or profile in Ever Crisis? Not no. yet. Uh, again, if if uh, if they manage to stick to their guns and have that when children, he will show up. Obviously, it's it, it's it's implied that uh, again, like I said, because it was all, all, now it's my turn to protect others. Like others have protected me. Um, so honestly, I don't mind this. It's not perfect, but at the same time, at least unlike Last Order, this is structurally sound. Wait, that it's was not, his it, mom. There was who? What? He said, thanks for taking care of mom. Was that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I do like that bit. That old lady. Um, that was little alone until this. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice touch. I actually don't mind that, that's honestly. Cute. It, it, it's a nice touch. Like, especially because how I think the old lady has one of the better characters in this OVA. Like it I does said, also. I don't oh, mind God. this OVA. I think it's structurally sound. It's not Shakespearean or anything, but. If anything, like you said, it's a good testament of how good the writing of a novel is. Uh, again, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I really encourage. I, See, aside from, you know, um, buying it officially because you still can, again, it came out in 2018, it's easy to find on the internet, so give it a, give it a try. Yeah. No, like I said, I actually think this is fine, honestly. It's, it, like, it provides background for Denzel, uh, which, which the movie desperately needed. And like I said, I do like ah. the, and I do like the theme of being inspired by those who protected you to now try to be as good as those people that helped you. That's a, again, it it's, is it, nice. It's, it, it, it's fine. It's it's it, it works. It's not again. This is nothing amazing or anything, but as a sto as a short story, it works. It's I will fine. say it's kind of a shame that they didn't adapt the other chapters of On Away to Yeah, Smile. agreed. Um, I honestly think a big movie that worked as an anthology easily could have worked, uh, especially because, like you said, the other chapters. Uh, in it are equally, you know, interesting and uh, provide something, you know, uh, that could be showcased. Like I said, I mentioned, you know, episode of Anarchy, um, an episode of Barrett, for example, the one attached to Yuffie. And the last one is the one that I mentioned in the past, Jova, which uh, is uh, Sevier and Ari for supposedly starting their 4D chess game, supposedly. <laughs> so there is that too. Um, but anyway, that, that's it. No post credit scene for these two, so Denzel will not be invited anywhere. I guess he cut the pork he does lack, I guess, I suppose. He will so, not be invited to the reunion. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> so, final thoughts uh, for these two OVAs. Uh, Jova, you want to start? Okay, so... <sighs> the Last Order... It's not the mess I was led to believe it was by disgruntled fans, but I can also get why nobody really has anything super positive to say about it. Say for maybe the animation, but shoot, even sometimes the animation feels a bit jerky and some of the fight scenes have way too many cuts. Like, I can feel the limited budget screaming out at me. And then there's just all the plot contradictions, which, again, some feel a bit nitpicky to point out, but it feels like they pile up to the point where, really? Nojima wrote this? Again, it's not terrible, but it's incredibly contradictory. Like, my best guess is that they had a remake in mind and that this would have lined up with what that remake originally had planned before they scrapped it. And uh, trust me, for anyone who's aware of what it took to finally get the 7 remake, I would not be surprised if they had, like, several makings or ideas for the remake throughout the decades that fans have been waiting for that thing. But I digress. Like, Last Order is, at best, fine. At worst, it's kind of boring and a little inane with the cuts here. I get it, Zack is awesome. So awesome that despite defeating armies and dodging bullets like he's flipping Sonic, apparently he couldn't dodge a few bullets on that cliffside later on. Whoops. I guess it just goes to show that Cloud got literally all his awesomeness from Zack whatsoever. And even worse, the change to Cloud's fight with Sephiroth. 
No, please don't make it part of Sephiroth's 10D chess maneuver on going, Oh, well, I technically haven't lost. I'm going to essentially do the equivalent of a Smash self-KO. Bye! Game! <laughs> Pretty- <laughs> actually, has anyone done an edit for that scene with that? I can't imagine, you know, if you give no- if being knowing and not going enough, it might be might have done it, so... But, yeah, no, like, The Last Order feels like a mess. Like, a mess that, if you're a big, big, big Final Fantasy fan, heck, a gigantic Final Fantasy VII fan, give it a look, but other than that, I'm not too perturbed about them never re-releasing it, because it's essentially a flawed retelling of a scene that now has a lot more coverage thanks to the likes of Crisis Core, the remake, and probably eventually Ever Crisis as well. Mm-hmm. Um, the acting's fine, I guess. But again, I'll admit, it's hard for me to even really be positive because I constantly think back to all the contradictions. Yes, it's cool that all those Turks that we knew were there, but... That begs the question, why didn't they recognize Cloud? In fact, during the events of Seven, it's implied that Elena is actually one of the newer Turks practically fresh out the box, but no, apparently she was there long enough to be familiar with Zack and Cloud, so... Okay, she's still supposed to be. The idea is that she gets recruited right around that point, but it still begs the question of why... Would she know about that? Because uh, I'm pretty know. sure uh, enough time had passed between, like, you know, the end of Crisis Core and, like, the start of Seven <laughs> to the point where Elena should be better integrated than what Seven suggested was the case for her. Ah, uh, but, uh, yeah, no. Um, aside from that, again, the animation looks fine. It, it, it's a bit old, some of the stills, though, are not as great. But again, Last Order is fine. There's a lot wrong with it that I find, but at the end of the day, it is not the worst thing Square have released. It's not the worst animation they've delved into. But it is, sadly, just one of the ones that I see as the most destined to just be left alone and forgotten because... <sighs> Sadly enough, despite it not being the worst thing, it may be the most redundant and kind of worthless thing to bring back. Cause it's been done again, and it's been done better. Now, on the way to the smile, sorry, on a way to the smile is no. three times the charm. <clears throat> Final Fantasy VII on the way to a smile is much better. Again, it's not amazing, but A, it has a purpose, B, the pacing feels more in line, and C, it actually ties in with its source material much better, essentially. So, to my understanding, this thing is like a preview for Advent Children that, ironically enough, takes place after Advent Children. Well, or at least, you know, the bit with the, the framing kids. The framing device, so. Yeah, the, the framing, framing device, device does. essentially, That's all yeah. talking to Reeve, yeah. And, you know, again, it's nothing remarkable, okay? Like, Denzel is an okay character who was stuck into a... I'm gonna try and be nice and say okay plot for Advent Children, but... Nah, that still feels like a bit of a stretch. Advent Children was a mess, but we're not talking about that now. Regardless, though, Denzel is Denzel, and to give this movie credit, it does actually craft him up to be an interesting character. Someone who, like a lot of the cast of Seven, went for a lot of hard times, but retains an upgoing and plucky uh, outlook on life. Now again, uh, one issue that does arise is some of the things that feel like contradictions. Ergo, the Geostigma is confusing in this bout. So, again, despite how Geostigma works, this kid should have died by all reason, essentially, but nope, apparently he was fine enough to not only survive the Geostigma, but repel it before the cure even came, even though I was led to believe that once you got Geostigma, that's it, your time was basically a ticking clock at that point. But 
No, he is a very, very, very lucky child. Part of me does wonder if the makers of On the Way to a Smile didn't get the complete notes from Advent Children, since, you know, obviously these two tie in. I don't know if that's the case, but it is what it is. That said, animation is nice. It's nice to see Reeve. The story overall is not bad, if a little predictable, especially if you've seen Advent Children, so you know any caretaker that isn't Tifa is likely going to be toast. Yeah, I guess the only issue I do have is like, again, it feels like there's not really any big point and purpose to this. And you know, maybe I'm looking a little too deep trying to find a big point and purpose, but again, it feels like this is essentially lip service for Denzo. Like, I feel like if this were part of an anthology series, I'd be more okay with it. But as it being the sole OVA they chose from On the Way to a Smile, it does feel like it has more pressure put onto it than it can sustain. That being said, this one is just fine, essentially. It's packaged in with DVD, so you can enjoy it just fine. It has flaws, but... This one, I'm more okay with rewatching than Last Order. Alright, uh, Shioi. Yeah, the first one was just sort of there. Um, it definitely exists. <laughs> I guess has a lot of the same issues that anime adaptations of game stuff tend to have doesn't annoy me as much as some others but it's just yeah it was it was pretty nothing to me honestly mm -hmm. the second one was much better uh pretty cute um there weren't any major issues with it probably because it was so much smaller in scale i guess um mm -hmm. yeah I, ju I just like that one better <laughs> there's nothing there's nothing like since you brought up you know games turn being turned into anime there's nothing on the level of uh the 12 anime cutting off completely anekoma's talk short because that was one thing that i remember oh you taking a big issue at <laughs> basically when i showed her the first episode of, uh, of 12 uh, the anime i mean like uh she was part i didn't even have to prompt her she immediately went wait 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 that no that conversation was a lot longer in the game <laughs> oh boy <laughs> like a lot longer <laughs> But um, yeah, I, I enjoyed the I enjoyed the second one. Um, I don't think I have much else to say about that. All right, Pedro. Like I said, last order. I'm not mad. I'm just like, whatever. It's just like I I can ignore it. Like even Square is ignoring it. <laughs> so what does that tell you? I get um, why they ignored it. Yeah, so whatever. It's not like it harmed anything in the long, in the grand scheme of things. Uh, pretty much everybody's already forgotten about this, and whatever. It's stupid. It it commits quite a lot of stupid mistakes. But again, at this point, nobody even remembers this thing for the most part. I wouldn't be surprised if someone makes a YouTube video at some point going, "Hey, remember Final Fantasy VII Last Door?" Much like how a lot of people make those kinds of videos about pieces of meat that people don't um mm -hmm. um yeah that, that's the basic point so last order is not great uh it's bad kind of but at the same time i'm not mad it's just like whatever uh episode um, um episode denzel i'm okay with this honestly i think it's it's perfectly serviceable as a story to contextualize denzel's presence in advent children and also give him more of a purpose and uh and give him like a proper end to his arc where the people that saved him over the course of of this short inspired him to now do the same thing they did to other people and why he wants to join the wro um which again yeah again perfectly sound it gives him a proper end that is satisfying and gives all the shit he went through purpose like i said it's nothing Shakespearean, but whatever. Um, I'm perfectly fine with this. It works as a story. It's uh, and like I said, that final touch of the old lady being um, uh, being Reeves' um, mother. Reeves' mother. 
Uh, that was a nice touch. Uh, Nojima wrote this, right, too? If I recall, yes, it's, it's an adaptation yeah. of his novels. So... Yeah, this is, so yeah, this seems is one that of Nojima the... pretty much always gets him, well, for the most part, gets him. Like I said, outside of some specific occasion, like the the 10 2 extra novel that got adapted into the radio drama, it, it's more of an occasion of which puppeteer is commanding Nojima. Ah. Basically. Yeah. So Amazing. Nojima's more like just the person who adapts the story to paper, if I understand correctly. Pe people, people remember, give remember the... Nomura... So, sorry. Pe remember, Nojima no. is a script writer. He's not a director. He's not the story writer. He's the script writer. Much like what we saw, uh, like Teo said, puppeteer. Like in 7, uh, Sakaguchi was the puppeteer. Whereas in 8, uh, Kitaze was the puppeteer. So Nojima had to, even if Nojima found something of, Koji, of, of, sorry, of Kitaze's ideas to be a bad idea, he couldn't do anything because Kitaze was the one in charge. Um, so, yeah, that's basically it, like Teo said. The, um, Nojima is a script writer. He's beholden to what the director and the story writers told him to write into a script. You know, he can't do anything about that. Um, as for the rest, no, it, it's it's like I said, this is just fine. Again, I, I have no problem. It works as a story. It's it's it has a nice ending that is satisfying and at the very least uh, leaves on a positive note. So, like I said, I have no real problem with this. I'm perfectly fine with with this existing. And again, it's included in the Advent Children Complete Blu-ray, so Square seems to be also perfectly fine that this exists as well. So, yeah, good. It would be, it's a shame we couldn't get adaptations for the rest of the novel. Uh, but, well, at least we got this one. Tell you. Yeah. Um, honestly, I just cut in the sheet of the rule and said that both of them are kind of a mess in different ways. Mm -hmm. Last Order has the, the disadvantage of, uh, you know, budding up what should be a relatively clear event that already had weird connotations because uh, even in Before Crisis, the way the Evil Line flashback is told is weird. Apparently, while on the way to, a, to the reactor, Tifa was apparently attacked by a pack of dragons and your player Turk has to defend her, just to give you an idea. How um, random. Yeah. Um, but uh, it also, again, outside of, you know, the thing that I mentioned that we criticized, like Sephiroth, uh, you know, um, uh, committing smash KO. Um, I had to argue that uh, the medals are style does not fit it. Uh, I normally am a fan of them, and I do, for example, like I said, I did like how the uh, Devil May Cry anime turned out, uh, but it's mostly because the Devil May Cry works better with that kind of art style being more mature related in terms of, you know, graphic stuff uh, and uh, Dante's fight against the demons, while Final Fantasy VII, even in the original case, always struck to me to be the more traditional shonen Saturday morning cartoon type of, you know, anime. Um, something that would be like, say, Monster Rancher, Digimon, stuff like that. I'm thinking of that kind of art style for an like, anime adaptation. Um, but again, this was the con being Square Enix trying to, you know, focus on... Uh, um, the cementing the uh, photorealism of their products, and I get the idea maybe the thought process behind making an anime was also going through that, making things relatively detailed, you know, the models board proportionally realistic, less emphasis on the comedy, you know, um, unless some specific, some specific occasion like with the Turks. And again, the end result is just not really good. The fact that he also recovery, you know, uses I guess it nice it's more of a case it is a prelude. But having played, you know, Crisis Core, the fact that basically an entirety of the score of Lost Over Lost Order is basically composed by songs with of that, you know, and not not one single original one seems to be. Mm. It just deprives it also a bit of, you know, identity as a result. The only real appeal is just to get a sneak peek at the alternate Turks that, uh, you know, that were present before Crisis. But that's kind of it, and it's not really worth it, you know. If you're really curious, just watch a walkthrough of, of the emulated version, or wait and hope for the... if we will have that to the Never Crisis, you know. Because, like you said, the story before Crisis is actually interesting on its own and worth to be, you know, to be checked. Um, so there is that. 
As for, you know, on the way it was my episode, Denzel, the writing is much better, although, like you said, you can be some of these, uh, Denzel is having one bad day after another, you know. Um, the animation is technically also better, but it showcases the fact that it's cutting corners for its wide shots. Like you said, the, the, these vulnerable character, you know, models, uh, they look so off model. It's like I'm watching a bad episode of Yu Gi Oh! 5Ds. Um, and I don't think it was very intentional. It was also nice for them to bring back characters like Johnny and also try to, you know, playing around with things by introducing a couple of original characters like Gaskin, you know, in order to showcase different people that Denzel bounced around before they were killed off by the Geo Stigma. So a bit of a commitment trying something mixing a bit with the old with the new so that wasn't too much of a problem the problem is that they argue it's something that could have been condensed in five minutes instead of 25 mm. um or 20 because the credits were really well that long um and again just made it as a tie-in to advent children as in honestly i did we didn't really need it even this um this adaptation just including advent children you know part of denzel's backstory in these extra five minutes and it probably would have helped you know be the same like i'm glad it was the effort of trying to make an adaptation and to properly export better on the way to a which back then you know was not uh, really something that uh, overseas viewers could outside of you know fine translation so that is commendable but the other stories included are technically better. Like, this one is still solid, but the others are better too. I do uh, like the fact that the score is original this time around. It doesn't, I feel like actually a couple of the, the things in Advent Children are present here, but it's not as recycled heavy as Last Order. But that's kind of it. So that is the duology of the Avengers even OVAs. That's, the only thing that we got, so I guess my childhood dream of wanting a Final Fantasy VII anime crashed and burned even, you know, more disastrously than, you know, the meteor fall. How sad. Oh, um, yes. The, technically speaking, like we said, Square Enix is, wasn't done with uh, trying animated adaptation of Final Fantasy. So we still have to do King's Wave, but that's, you know, tied to you know, when, if we ever get to Final Fantasy XV. And there's Legend of the Crystal, which, unless that one is really getting re-released, I don't think it's really worth checking it out because uh, the copies that are found have, uh, you know, are not really good quality. And the story, the English dub is almost un un unhearable. And the story itself, regardless of the dub, is just meh. <laughs> Both uh, as a story in its own and as a, especially as a sequel to Final Fantasy V. Not V, not helped by the way fan service is handled. Seriously, me, Deji, and Pedro gave it a look recently, and yeah, it's not really worth it. Outside it's not of, good, trust uh, me. Outside of preservation purposes, it's not really, you know, I, I immediate priority. I would, rather not, I would rather not watch that again because it's. Ugh. Okay, <laughs> worse than the Blue Dragon anime? No, but from well, from, it's well. a it's a bit of a different comparison, Java, because the Blue Dragon anime was a full CLI series, while Legend of the Crystal is a composition of four OVAs for the entire duration of like I think sixty minutes. So mm -hmm. there is that. But anyway, that's uh, that's besides the topic. The point is very tough. Maybe we'll check it out in the future. Maybe not. Who knows? That's it for the time being. So stay tuned for more Final Fantasy VII content to come. See ya. See ya. See ya.